Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out at the range with an affordably priced 9mm carbine. I get an awful lot of messages saying, Mac, why don't you talk about stuff that the you know, rest of us can afford, or all of us can afford, and I understand that. Keep in mind this channel's about things that I like to shoot, I like to enjoy, and things that I want to personally add to my own firearms collection. And I'm not always looking for affordably priced firearms. You know, price does play a factor in buying decisions, of course, but typically I'm looking for something in particular, especially when talking about surplus firearms, which is kind of the thing that I, I like to get my hands on the most. But that's the reason why I found myself over at Classic Firearms site again, um, because they always seem to have their hands on really cool surplus firearms. So I surfed in their site and I came across this FX9 carbine and I started reading about it and the price seemed to be fair, $599. And uh, I thought, what the heck, let's, let's pick one up and give it a try. And what I found out about the gun is that it's made by Freedom Ordnance, but it was a collaborative effort between Classic Firearms and Freedom Ordnance to produce this 9mm carbine. They wanted to keep it uh, affordable, but they wanted it to be reliable and well made. So the construction's all aluminum, and I'll just quickly go over some of the key features of the gun. We'll talk more about that later, but it has a standard 16-inch barrel. It is chambered in 9mm, has a 13-inch M-lock rail system on it, pick rail on top, 1913. Um, it comes with everything you see here, with the exception of the Trijicon MRO and the Midwest Industries mount. So it does not come with iron sights, although over Memorial Day they did do a special that came with... Uh, backup sights and two extra SGM tactical 30 round magazines. I was just on their site today. Today is the 30th, so we're past the holiday. The sale was supposed to end on the 29th, but it's still showing on their website, so maybe that sale is going to run for a little bit longer. But typically for $599, this is what you'll get, minus the sight system. It has UTG collapsible stock, and the fire controls are very familiar to you if you're used to the AR 15 with its T handle and selector switch. So what we're gonna to do today is take it out of the box, which we've done obviously, because I'm holding it in my hands, and shoot it for the first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock the bolt to the rear using the standard AR-15 controls. I'm gonna take this SGM Tactical Magazine with Freedom Munitions 9mm ammo loaded, and I'm gonna pound away at one of those challenge targets downrange. Let's go for the IP-6 style uh, beater man-sized target, and again, we're about 50 yards away. Let's see if we can hit him. Did not quite go into battery. Hmm. These SGM magazines fit just a little bit tightly. All right, let's try that again. All right, locked open. These SGM magazines are interesting. I'm gonna have to check and see if I have some Glock magazines. I've had some problems with them in the past in terms of not being 100% reliable. Let's go dig around through the Jeep, see if we can find some Glock mags and give it a try. Now we're gonna see how well the FX9 runs some 124 grain Freedom Munitions. This is their, their Match Pro ammo. It's 124 grain ball, but you'll notice it has a little bit of a weird tip there on it. And uh, so we're gonna run it and see if it likes this kind of blunted nose ammunition. We have two Happy Sticks. These are made by SGM Tactical. Uh, these are pretty close copies of the original Glock 30 round magazines, but these are, I believe, made in Korea and they're offered for sale by SGM Tactical. So these are not Glock magazines. All right, and we're just going to run two happy sticks and then I have an SGM Tactical 50 round drum. We're going to see how it works in the FX9. All right, here we go. I almost dropped my 50 round drum there. I will say these are not the most comfortable things to carry around. Ugh. All right, got to have big pockets. And we had a failure to ignite. Heard a click, but no bang. There's a round in the chamber. And let's see if we can get it to go bang this time. Alright, locked open. Had one weird failure there. Don't think it was the ammo, there was no mark on the primer. Another 30 rounds. 
Weird. All right, so I let the bolt go home. I pulled the trigger and I felt the bolt go ka chink and go home. All right, locked open. It's kind of cool, man. It's pretty easy. We're about, uh, I don't know, 20 yards or so from the challenge target down there, the little dueling tree. Now this magazine fits in a little bit tight. Should have 50 rounds in this one. Make sure the bolt went home. And I don't think it's supposed to lock open, but it's out of ammo and the bolt's kind of in the half back position. Hmm. I don't think the SGM Tactical 50 round drum actually has a bolt hold open feature. I think it's just kind of, oh, that's tight. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't. It just kind of hung up on the, uh, the end of the follower there, so. Kind of sort of a bolt hold open feature. Yeah, that thing fits in the magazine well really, really tight. I'm gonna go try a Glock magazine. It's not, it shouldn't be that tight. That's probably just an SGM tactical thing. Let's grab a Glock mag. Now, this is the first range session for me with the FX9, and I just grabbed my Trichicon MRO. It's one of my spares I keep in for putting on test rifles, and it has my Midwest Industries quick detach base on it. And so I just kind of stuck it on the gun and I figured I'd have to spend a magazine or two getting the thing zeroed this afternoon. We put the darn thing on and it's spot on and zero. That doesn't happen very often. Got lucky there. So what we're gonna try now is just a standard factory Glock magazine. It's a 17 round magazine. I only have uh, 15 rounds loaded. I'm kind of, uh, you know, o uh, OCD about that. I only do in groups of five. I think I've said that before here on the channel. So the Glock magazine does fit very easily into the magazine well and it does not drop free even with a loaded magazine so it does have a bit of a friction fit but it goes right in the sgm magazines definitely have a slightly tighter fit on the happy sticks the drum has a very tight fit so let's go ahead and see how it runs the, the same freedom munitions 124 grain match ammo uh, out of the standard glock 17 magazine And it locks open just fine. So I think, guys, those SGM Tactical magazines, they're not exactly the exact same dimensions as the Glock mags. I'm thinking that when those failures to feed took place, that was actually the bolt hanging up a little bit on those SGM Tactical magazines because the bolt wasn't going completely into battery. And uh, this magazine definitely works more smoothly, allowing the bolt to go home uh, very easily. Where the SGM magazines, I can feel a little bit of drag on the bolt. So. I think you're going to find optimum performance with the FX9 using factory Glock magazines. I'm going to keep using the happy sticks that I brought out from SGM simply because I don't longer carry a Glock. I used to have like tons of Glock magazines in the Jeep. That's not the case anymore. I carry a CZ, so I have a bunch of CZ magazines, but uh, I had to dig around to find a Glock 17 magazine. But fortunately, I have one factory original here, so we can uh, shoot with it as well this afternoon. So Peaches, the name affectionately given to my Jeep, never seems to fail us. We're having some problems with the SGM Tactical magazines, perhaps being a little bit out of spec and causing the bolt to drag a little bit too much and not going completely into battery. So we started digging around underneath the seats and look what we found. We do already have that one Glock 17 magazine I had, but we found another one and an actual Glock Happy Stick. So we actually have Glock magazines to use. The FX9, let's talk about the field stripping. It is very similar to an AR-15. There's only a couple minor differences. The rifle, first of all, has a UTG stock on it, standard M4 buffer tube, 
It uses a standard, what looks to be a standard M4 style buffer assembly on the inside with the recoil spring and the buffer itself. It is a straight blowback weapon, has an M-lock rail system on it. It is marked as uh, made in the USA and then Freedom Ordnance has their markings on it. So I don't know if they're making it themselves or they're, uh, somebody's white boxing it for them, but the stock itself is UTG, standard A2 pistol grip and it has a 1913 pick rail. It runs across the entire length, top part of the firearm, which makes it very easy to put red dot sights like this MRO with the Midwest Industries quick detach base on it. So field stripping, I'm gonna use the tip of a bullet. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because this is one of the differences between it and standard AR-15. If you take a look at the right side of the pen, you'll notice there's this steep shelf around the, the pen and that the upper part of this receiver is a little bit thicker. If you look on the other side, that pin is recessed into a shelf once again. So pushing the pin out with your finger is not gonna happen. You're gonna need the tip of a bullet. So I take a tip of a bullet, which in this case is a 6.5 Grindle, start that pin, very easy to do, flip her around, pull the pin out, and the gun hinges open and ejects its straight blowback bolt carrier. Well, I guess this is just a standard bolt. There is no carrier, straight blowback. That comes out the T-handle which is a standard AR-15 type T-handle, but is not a standard AR-15 T-handle. No, you can't put a standard AR-15 T-handle in here. This is kind of like a little miniature one. It's almost like the SIG MPX. It's just like a little teeny tiny facsimile of an actual AR-15 T-handle, but it has a little hook and everything right there. The T itself is a little bit smaller than a standard AR-15 T-handle as well, but you'll notice it slides straight in versus a AR-15 style where you have to start down and pull up and then push in. This one just slides straight in. Fire controls look just like standard AR-15 fire control set to me. Has two standard pins. I would imagine you could drop any other type of trigger that you would like to in there to answer the questions that I know are going to come. Does it work with an echo trigger system? And it does not because of the bolt differences. All right, you can also unpin that top half if you want to. I don't know if I'm actually going to do this, but why not? You can unpin the top half as well and completely separate your upper from the lower. All right. Standard aluminum construction. You can see it has a standard buffer and spring assembly inside there. And you can see your uh, bolt release right here and the mag well for the gun, UTG stock once again. So the gun's meant to be very affordable. Now the firing pin is removable, has a little cotter pin in here. You can pry this out. I'm not gonna do it because it's always a pain in the rear end to get those pins back in, even in a standard AR-15, especially one that's new. But you just pull this out and your firing pin drops out. All right, put her back together. Just do it like any standard AR-15. Pin that front half on first. I already have the T-handle in place, but I'm gonna slide it out because the top has a little knob up here that keeps it riding straight because it is straight blowback and you don't want it twisting inside the upper receiver. Put it in there, make sure your pin's pulled out. Close her up and she's back together again. All right, here we go with the SGM Happy Stick. Let's try it. I got some Glock magazines here. She ran just fine. Now let's try a factory Glock 17 round magazine. Didn't lock open that time. And she locks open. And now, I actually did find a Glock Happy Stick. And she locked open. So there we go. It seems like we're having some perfect function out of the little gun right now. We just ran two 30 round magazines and two 17 round magazines. Again, this is its first range session. It's kind of interesting because we're using those blunted nose bullets, but the gun had that hiccup in the opening. But um, yeah, let's shoot it some more. I think we have about 500 rounds here this afternoon. We'll see if we can't put most of those through the gun. Well guys, we find ourselves in something of a unique position this afternoon. That's because I have a gun that uses Glock magazines and I'm pretty sure it 80s hip fires. Get to the chopper.
<laughs> that was just my trigger finger. Let me see, I got some 17 round magazines in here too. I said get to the chopper. That <laughs> thing's got an awesome trigger in it. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, it didn't lock open that time. Seems like that one Glock magazine doesn't like to lock open. These are some old Glock mags. But uh, <laughs> that's actually pretty cool, man. That trigger rock and rolls. What a fun little gun. Sorry, my Arnold impersonation sucks. So we bring you guys along real time in these videos. We show you malfunctions and we show you everything we can. And now we're actually gonna show you uh, some redneck engineering. So what we're gonna do, and this isn't all that complex, is we're gonna take my Revolution 9 suppressor and we're gonna see if it fits on this gun. I'm assuming it uses a standard half by 28 thread. And I have a good old fashioned crescent wrench from Inside Peaches. And let's go ahead and see if we can break this loose. And it does have a crush washer on there. Hopefully that'll come right off. It did, so the crush washer isn't overly crushed, which is good. Sometimes you have to cut those darn things off. It looks like a half by 28. It feels like a half by 28. I hope I didn't, thank goodness, I didn't bring a boosted suppressor. Sometimes you'll see me shooting <laughs> suppressors that have boosters on them, and you're not supposed to do that. I have a couple of these cans. And let's back it all the way down until it hits that shoulder. Snug her up. And gentlemen, we have ourselves a suppressed FX9. All right, so digging through peaches, I managed to find a case of 147 grain Freedom Munitions ball. So what does that mean? That means it's subsonic. And this is the lovely pink box. I don't know why they did this box, but I've seen plenty of it in 380 and 9 millimeters. So, all right, 147 grain ammo, suppressor, subsonic, SGM magazine that ships with the gun. Let's go ahead and load a few rounds. Now, guys, what's funny about this is, generally speaking, I will drop at least one round while loading a magazine. It's kind of like a standing joke here when we film, but I have to drop at least one round. And now I'm not going to do it because I talked about it. And I'm getting a lot of use out of my Mag Lula. I'm so glad I remembered I had it. Otherwise, I'd be doing this the old-fashioned way. Let's get 30 rounds in this SGM here really quick. We will not use hearing protection, but we will wear eye protection. All right, that should be about 30 rounds. Look how fast that up Lula works. Almost dropped it. Ah, no dropped rounds. All right, drop the box. Let's go ahead and make ready here. Put my iPro on and get ready for some suppressed fun. Let's see how this guy works with a silencer. <laughs> All right, I know you guys get mad at me when I shoot steel targets with subsonic ammo, so let's go ahead and shoot a dirt berm. I can honestly say the clicking of this bolt is louder than the gunshot. It's actually quite loud, that clicking of the bolt. I don't know if it's not hearing safe, I don't think it is, but I'm deaf anyway. All I know is this is fun. <laughs> it's like a little symphony. Look how fast I can control those shots. Well guys, if you're wanting to buy one of these to suppress it, I would say it makes a fairly decent suppressor host. No malfunctions and uh, really easy installation. Standard half by 28 thread. I'm enjoying this little carbine, probably more than I should be. This is fun. I have to let Jason shoot it. Can't let Tim have all the fun here. This seemed like a lot of fun.
That's just, that's really nice. That is really nice. Well, we've put just over 700 rounds to the gun so far this afternoon with a mix of ammunition. We have some 124 grain hollow point pro match, and we have some 124 grain ball, and we have some 147 grain subsonic all from Freedom Munitions. And with the exception of a couple of bobbles that we saw at the beginning of our shooting session, which I think we traced to a magazine, which we've taken that magazine out of the loop, uh, we've had no more malfunctions this afternoon at all. And again, to the tune of about 700 rounds. So am I happy with the FX9 carbine? Yes, I am. I mean, at 599 bucks, that's a pretty darn good value today. I was kind of uncertain about it. I always think, ah, uh, you know, at that price point, something might not be so hot. This particular example, which is a sample set of one, I always warn you guys of that, you know, never buy something based strictly on my opinion, but certainly never sell anything based strictly on my opinion, because I usually just have a, a sample set of one. But this sample set of one is running like a top, and we've had a lot of fun with it this afternoon. We lubed it up before we started shooting this afternoon, as we always do with new firearms. We haven't put a drop of lube on it since, and 700 rounds later, we're still having no malfunctions, and we've been running it suppressed for the last part of the afternoon. Now it's time to bug out of here and go grab some lunch. We have our favorite little Mexican food restaurant that we don't go to nearly enough anymore now that we've moved Copper Custom to a new location. And we're gonna go do that this afternoon. So we're looking forward to that. Guys, I'm gonna ask you to do something. Go to the link down below and join the NRA. The NRA is going on the offense under new leadership with Pete Brownell at the helm. And we're gonna to start to undo some of these draconian gun laws that we live under. I have been one of the most staunch critics of the NRA in the past. Uh, I'm talking to them directly now, and I am 100% confident in Pete Brownell's leadership, so much so I became a life member. But I also have a special link down below that if you follow that link and share that link, yes, I do get proceeds from you joining or renewing your subscription, I, I should say uh, your membership to the NRA, but I take every single cent of that and I donate it directly to Hero Hunt a group that I've supported for some time, a group I've gone into the field with and gone hunting with, and Hero Hunt supports all of our nation's wounded warriors and first responders, which include fire, rescue, uh, EMT, and police. And they do great things for people that really need it. So please use that link and please share that link because those proceeds, again, go to a very good nonprofit organization. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, swing by and become a subscriber to our patron page. Our patron page is a great way first to support the channel here, but also you get to talk to me directly. I answer all communications through patron, but we've also turned it into something of a buyer's club. So we go out and we, we find smoking deals on closeout in different places from distribution and stuff like that at Copper Custom. And we pass those savings along directly to you. We're even going to manufacturers directly. Because it's a private buyer's club, we can sell it for whatever price. And we negotiate unbelievably low prices that I can't talk about outside of the buyer's club because it violates MAP. But that's how we give back to you. And thank you for supporting the channel through patron. If you'd like to support the channel another way, just swing by and check out Copper Custom, which is our online store. And also check out Full30.com, it's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators, brought them under one Second Amendment friendly roof, and that is Full30.com. Now I have three magazines here before me, and I'm gonna go ahead and run them out of the gun to close this out. Thanks for watching everybody, thanks for all those years of support, and here we go. Now watch, I'll have a malfunction. <laughs> Keep in mind, one of these Glock magazines don't lock open. It's not that one, it's this one. There's a squirrel running around down there. And the SGM Tactical 30 round magazine. <laughs> I love this little thing. That's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching guys.